Corn beef, it's a dish many of us would have grown up on. I know I did. We would have it every couple of weeks. And I must admit, I didn't love it. But now I'm matured, I do love it. And I love to cook it for my family. Let's talk about the corned beef first. You need to start this recipe ahead of time. So place it into a big pot of cold water into the fridge and let it soak. By doing that, we're just extracting a lot of the salt in it. The next day, take it out of the water, place it into a pot of cold water again. And then I'm just starting to bring it up to the boil now. Now we can add loads of flavour to it. So you can be quite generous with the flavours. Two carrots will also include that in the dish, but it also does sweeten up the corned beef. Speaking of sweetening up, I like to add some brown sugar to this. Okay. And one onion. Now I've just studded the onion with some cloves. By studding this, it's going to be much easier to take out. You may not think it's going to flavour it too much, but cloves have loads of flavour and this is one of my key secrets to the corned beef. Next, some garlic. I'm going to use the whole bulb, just cut it in half. And then we'll just place that in, skin and all. Some star anise, so two to three star anise and some peppercorns. Herbs, a big handful of thyme and some fresh bay leaves. Okay. The last thing I like to add is some apple cider vinegar. And that is a flavour bomb right there for our corned beef. Now, you can cook this in two hours, but if you want it to be super succulent and tender, give it five hours. Yes, I know, it seems like a long time, but pop it on in the afternoon, on a Sunday afternoon in particular. Have this for dinner, it's going to be divine. So about an hour before this is ready, I'll get some potatoes on and some cabbage, and I'll show you how to make the most divine Irish cold cannon. Okay, the corned beef is cooked. Have a look at it. Oh, it smells so good. And just by feeling it, I can see that this is super tender. Now we'll turn off the heat and just let it sit there for a moment while we get onto the cold cannon. So I placed some potatoes in some cold water, brought it up to the boil. Once it starts to boil, I add the cabbage. Now this is a Savoy cabbage. You want to add it just after the potatoes because you want to cook at the same time. So I've just placed it into a bowl just to cool down for a moment while we start mashing these potatoes. So to this, I'm going to add some white pepper. Now, Uncle Colin, he always adds white pepper to his mash. In fact, this is his recipe for cold cannon, being Irish and all. So white pepper is a must, according to Colin, and some butter and a good amount of butter. I'll add about 20 to 30 grams. In it goes. Just using your classic masher, we're going to mash all of this together. We don't want any lumps whatsoever. Cold cannon is an Irish mash, but what makes it different to a classic is it has the combination of green. So I'm using cabbage, but you could use some kale with this. Um, any leafy green works a treat. And you have to have spring onions in it. So I'll add them in a moment. Once that butter starts to melt in, we can add some hot milk, a little splash. And when it's a bit hard to use the masher, take that out. And I like to transfer over to a wooden spoon just to start whipping it. This is not like the French potato puree that's super smooth. It needs to have a little bit of texture to it. So don't add too much milk and don't forget the salt. And again with that. Now for our cabbage, we'll just take that out of the bowl and we're just going to roughly chop it into little pieces. You can see how it's got still a slight crunch to it, not too soft. We want that texture in the cold cannon. All right, let's pick up that and pop it straight in. And some spring onions, about four spring onions, giving them a good wash. And for this recipe, you can use the whole lot. So cut them in half and just finely chop that. I like it to be quite fine, so it's not too intense in onion flavour. And I also like to reserve just some of the green tops for the garnish. All right, in with the spring onions, sprinkle that in and we'll whip that once again. 
All right, let's start to slice this glorious corned beef. Just carefully transfer it over to a board, it's so tender. Okay, we'll grab a shallow bowl and with a sharp knife, we're going to just slice this. Oh, look at that. See how it's almost falling apart? It is that soft. This is how I love to eat corned beef. It's literally fork tender where I could just use a fork if I really wanted to shred this. All right, so a big dollop of our cold cannon into our bowl and just make a little indent. And remember those carrots that we added to our corned beef? Don't forget them. They've been cooking long and slow. They are super tender and sweet. And I love the addition to the corned beef. That's quite salty. So I'll just pop that on my board too. And we'll just cut a few, look at that, just so soft. Cut a few pieces of that. That can go on top, on the side there. And then a few pieces of our tender corned beef. There we go. So delightful. And see all these juices? Don't waste that a spoonful over the top. That looks good. I love some mustard with this, so a spoonful of Dijon mustard over the top. And those spring onions, a sprinkle too. That right there is hearty, winter food at its best. Corned beef, it's salted beef. It's been cooking for a long time. It's economical, it's going to feed loads of people. In winter, that's the food I crave.